Hello, Internet. My name is Lave, and my London Film Festival experience continues with Loving Vincent, which is a film directed by Dorota Kobiela and Hugh Welchman, who decided to make a film that charts the aftermath and the death of the famous Impressionist Vincent van Gogh. Now, what really attracted me to this film is that they decided to make it an animation, not a 2D cell-drawn animation, not a 3D computer animation, but the world's first fully oil-painted animation, all done in the style of the great man himself. And from a visual standpoint, this film is truly astonishing and awe-inspiring. It's such a massive achievement, but then you don't need me to tell you that. Just look at it. It's absolutely stunning. And let me tell you, from the very first frame of this film, which actually starts with a title sequence, which in itself is just amazing. My jaw literally fell open, and then when the film actually started, it almost hit the floor. It's so beautiful, almost to the point that I had to remind myself to concentrate on the story which they're trying to tell. It's that mesmerizing. Now, intriguingly, the story they're telling is actually a detective story set a year after his death and primarily follows a character called Armand Roulin, who is the son of a postmaster who was a friend of Van Gogh, who gives his son a letter from Vincent, which was intended for his brother Theo, who has actually also died as well. So Armand Roulin has to go and deliver it to an appropriate recipient, and along the way, he has to find out more about how he died. Now, I don't want to insinuate that I'm a Vincent van Gogh expert. I've never studied his life or his work academically. I just know the basics, and that's basically from watching various TV documentaries about him. I know stuff like he cut off his ear famously and then gave it to a prostitute. I know he had a really good relationship with his brother Theo, and an even more complicated relationship with the other artist Paul Gauguin. All of that stuff is really, really fascinating, but this film decides to just kind of glaze over that stuff. It mentions it, but it never really fully explores it. Instead, they focus on Roulin's character and his interpretation of the events that happened through various talks with eyewitnesses, many of whom you suspect may be unreliable or dubious. And in my opinion, it does heavily suggest that Van Gogh was actually killed by someone. I'm not going to spoil the circumstances or who. Now, this approach to the film is interesting to a certain degree. It really has a noir murder mystery feel to it. The director even described it as a Vincent noir, which I particularly liked, but I'm just saying that I don't feel like it really explored the character of Vincent van Gogh. I think there's a lot more to be told. And as I say, it only really touches on certain aspects of his life, like the bit with his ear and his relationship with the prostitute, Paul Gauguin, and his brother. However, it does emphasize how troubled he was and how lonely, heavily suggesting that he might be bipolar. But I don't know, it just feels like they only just scratched the surface of it. I just wanted to know more about the man. And the other niggle that I had with the film was the accents that all of the actors portray. So as an example, Douglas Booth is speaking with a London Cockney accent, which is really interesting because the last film that I watched him in, The Limehouse Golem, he did exactly the same thing and it just comes across as completely fake. But what's even weirder is that his father in it is played by Chris O'Dowd, and he's got a full-on Irish accent. It's just really, really strange. And this carries on throughout the film. So Suar Sharonan has a posh English accent, but then all of the natives speak with a native accent. It's just really curious because they've obviously put a lot of effort into casting people who look like the paintings and the real people. I don't know why they just didn't take that step further and then maybe dub their voices with native accents. It's really weird. I'm just trying to think about their thought processes when they were coming up with this. They obviously didn't want to do subtitles because then that would have taken away from the images that you're supposed to be looking at and gulping at. So I just don't get why they didn't take that extra step to give it that bit more authenticity. But as I say, they are just really niggly points because I don't want to take anything away from the huge technical achievement that this film is, which is even more ambitious when you consider that they incorporated camera movements into the shots, which just gives it even more energy and vibrancy. I really love some of the transition shots from scene to scene. It's just mesmerizing. They even capture the change of lighting throughout the day and all of the little nuances of all of the actors and their performances. It really is stunning and the ultimate love letter to the man himself. It's 
it's awe-inspiring. However, I did come away from this wishing that I'd seen a bit more of the other significant moments in his life just to act as a counterweight to the melancholic sad story that it is telling and it is quite sad in some moments. So that's my thoughts on Loving Vincent and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. The only film that I can remotely compare this to is Richard Linklater's A Scanner Darkly which did a similar thing. They rotoscoped actors' performances and then digitally painted over it. This one is obviously doing the same thing but with paint which does feel more impressive and more of an achievement. It is visually stunning and if I was basing this review purely on that I would say it's one of the best films of the year but unfortunately the story didn't tell me enough about Vincent for my liking because as I say I'm not an expert on the man other people might think, oh, they told enough. I don't know. So thanks very much for watching my review of Loving Vincent. I really do appreciate it. I've got a few more films coming up at London Film Festival, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks very much for watching. If you can, give this video a like and don't forget to share the leave. Subscribe.